and uh, it's got a spinny LED green ring on it too. I mean, now how much would you pay? Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source and Ben Stone. I'm joined every week by Jill Bryant and everybody watching at home. Hi, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Plenty to talk about, plenty going on in the world of Penguins, open source, uh, Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo, <being> <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> we'll talk about that on Linux Gamecast Weekly. Tune in this yeah. Saturday. The so, saga. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ah, oh, man. Um, so, you know, I, I've been on a little bit of a tear trying to make sure that Firewire audio interfaces do not end up in landfills. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we figured out how to do analog to digital conversion back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And despite the best efforts of the marketing departments of PreSonus, Focusrite, mm -hmm. Motu, uh, GoExa, we figured it out. They're not like I've shown you this with maths, like we're good. So older interfaces, especially stuff from like the mid two thousands and the tens and the fifteens and the aughts, what I don't know, whatever you want to call that, they're great. The only thing wrong with those interfaces is FireWire. Apple killed FireWire because they came to Intel one day. They had a good deal with Intel, and Intel was putting FireWire on motherboards. And Steve Jobs said, "Man, I want to buck a port." And Intel went Thunderbolt. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. We got Thunderbolt out of the deal. But yes. uh, we're stuck with all these great audio interfaces that are floating around because we're getting rid of um, FireWire support Windows 7, Windows no one, Windows 8 didn't exist. That's not really going to hurt you. Uh, Windows 10, Windows 11, and the new versions, especially the M-Series Max. Even with your crazy moon adapters to Thunderbolt 1 to Thunderbolt 2 to 3 or whatever to FireWire. And people are throwing them away. And you're getting them for crazy, crazy cheap. One thing in the Linux kernel, we have support thanks to TAC. For FireWire audio devices, and you can get a PCI Express FireWire add-in card for nothing, like 20, 30 bucks, allowing you to use this. And this is a great path for people who have thousands of dollars worth of audio interfaces to go, hmm, maybe I do need to look into this Linux thing instead of turning yeah. around and rebuilding <laughs> everything from the ground up for, you know, perfectly serviceable. Now, it's still good for like people like you and me. Because mm -hmm. a lot of those people are just like, you know what, I'm going to sell this stuff for pennies on the dollar on eBay. And you can pick up multi-thousand dollar interfaces for like $80, $100. It's awesome. But PipeWire is this new thing, right? It's, it's been around for a little while, yes, but sure people has. are really starting to use it. And uh, with FireWire audio interfaces, you got two sets of drivers. You got what I call the pro drivers. Like if you're serious about really serious about using your firewire interface for like what i'm doing here in the studio uh you're going to be using the fado stack and that that's the only way to get it done it's lower latency more stable they've been around forever and you got the Elsa stack what i talked about those are built into the kernel those are great you just plug your device in it works as a sound card there's no problems with it but that fado stack that pro stack didn't work so well and i brought that up a couple of times no one's done anything about that. I'm like, well, that's fine. Maybe I should make a video about it. Maybe I should break it down, do a write-up on what works and what doesn't. I did just that. I did just that. And I'm like, hey, this doesn't work. This does work. This is how poorly this performs to... Nah, I went down the thing. <laughs> that's not... There we uh, go. We're going to get uh, the primary developer of PipeWire, Wim Tamens. And it's like, I don't have a FireWire audio device. So, Christian... You might know him. You might love him. He's the director for desktop over at Red Hat. He's going to ship one one to play with. So hopefully, yay! Hopefully, we'll get all those little bugs and weirdnesses hammered out, and uh, these devices can stay at landfills, and people will be able to get great use out of them for many, many years to come. And if that, that let me tell you, these primarily work because they were reverse engineered back in the day by the mm -hmm. great people who did the Fado project. Why? Because manufacturers haven't changed because they came to them and said, hey man, can we get the specs to uh, create some Linux drivers? They went, go away, you smelly nerds. <laughs> yeah. So Focusrite, all, all these other companies were able to go, well, we're just not going to release drivers for uh, the Windows 11 and the new Macs and stuff like that. They don't have that option on Linux. Why? Because we're not dependent on those drivers. So I want to keep these devices out there and just chugging and chugging on. 
Yes. And uh, I'm going to continue my project. Uh, when I get a chance, I always buy new ones or ones I don't know about. I maintain a list over on Interfacing Linux. Go check it out. Put it in your face. Let me know what you think. Another mm -hmm. great win for Linux. Joe Bryant, what is new with you? Oh, boy. It's all been all about scale. The Southern California Linux Expo Scale 21X is coming March 14th through the 17th here in Los Angeles at the Pasadena Convention Center. And I've just, as I've been talking about the last few weeks, just going crazy, getting ready for my booze and uh, oh, doing all the organizing and getting ready to do interviews. <laughs> it's just one thing after another, <laughs> but it's it's my favorite weekend of the year. So I am looking forward to it and seeing all my friends and my Linux and scale family. And also then I had fun with our maps yesterday on our Trackmania stream. That was a, a lot of fun. I, I love the, the creative maps and even the Timu keyboard rainbow colored map. <laughs> you didn't love it as much as we did, Joe Bryan. Yeah, I know. Like, you guys, I got to go. And I, I was like, you know go. what? I got to go too. <laughs> yeah. um, but, <laughs> but you played it. Did you guys I, we, got we, all through we, it? We stuck around. Um, Ogie and um, Turbo Tree managed Spa. to get through it. I saw the exit two or three times. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we get together on Tuesdays and Fridays <laughs> to play an 11 year old game called Trackmania Nation yeah. Squared. Stadium, whatever it's called. Trackmania it's Stadium cheap. Squared. It's like nine <laughs> bucks. It runs on a 5600G. It runs on your Intel <laughs> iGPU. It's not a problem. Great, great time. It's not necessarily a racing game. It's arcade puzzle platforming. There is some racing elements in it. Go check it out and come hang out with us if you get a chance. We got our own little private server where we hang out. And of course, we stream it right here on Twitch. But let's go Yay. ahead and talk about not GIMP 3.0. But get yes, two nine nine point one eight. <laughs> yes, so the open source GIMP image editor, GIMP two dot nine nine dot one eight, has actually been released, and it is extremely special because yes, it's the last development release before GIMP three point We have been waiting for this moment <laughs> for a very long time. It's so about it, it. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. And but with this uh, development release, there are some huge new features for graphic artists um, that you know those of us who do art on Linux have been waiting for. Uh, and despite this being a work in progress, it's it's a good place to test this coming feature out. So the huge new feature I am talking about in the GIMP development release that is so important for artists is the initial support for non-destructive layer effects. And this allows you to make changes to the original image without overwriting the original data, and thus allows you to an option to revert back to the original image in a non-destructive form. This is you know, really huge. All the big proprietary graphics applications like Photoshop have the ability to work with images non-destructively and is one of the reasons why they are industry standard. And another big feature, there is a new welcome dialogue. And this is, they've needed this for a while. It actually is really cool because it has tabs for personalization, which allows you to adjust your theme, font scaling and icons. And it honestly is, this is one of the best things. It has a contribute tab with links where people can contribute to the GIMP project. How about that? <laughs> it's, it's needed that for a while. And it also has a create tab with handy buttons to create, open, and open recent images. So it's just, it's needed a welcome dialogue for a long time. And there are actually now three variants of theming, dark, light, and middle theming, um, which is more of a, a grayish. And a lot of improvements to color accuracy and improved color algorithms. And so make sure to check out the link to all the new features in our show notes and the link to download the GIMP 2.99.18 development version as a flat pack. This development release is a great way for the GIMP community to test bugs and report them to them. So go ahead out there and uh, play with the new development version of the GIMP. <laughs> it's awesome. Step one, install Flatpak. Nope. Um, 
spot. <laughs> Give me an app image or something like that. They do make it a point, though. They do make it a point. Yeah. It is, uh, this is a very unstable build. Like, in the announcement on the page, they say, this is mm -hmm. unstable. Be very careful with it. Don't get bit. Yeah. I want you to keep <laughs> that in mind. Also, from personal experience, I'll tell you about playing with development versions again. Be very responsible. I'm not responsible enough to play with the development <laughs> versions again because what will happen is they'll be working on a feature set. It might even be temporary and you will save your XCF file. Yeah. And you go to open it with your released <laughs> version or the next version. And it uh, work. Then, then you have yeah. to spend that afternoon like, what exact version was that? Okay, can I export that? So, no, just get it back in. I've done that. That's a me problem. Yeah. That's not a GIMP <laughs> problem. Some I'd like to see work done in GIMP though. I yeah. think about this is. Can we get some tools for like automatic background removal? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like much, but if you're the business of making thumbnails, yeah, I think about that idea. each and every week now, um, because we don't really have great options for it, like outside of just manually doing it with a lasso. Yeah, which yeah. Um, I've been doing that. There's a couple of uh, AI tool Python background removal, and they kind of work, but I, mm -hmm. I, I just seethe with jealousy when i see somebody on stream like oh hang on let me do 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 do, do that in uh, photoshop <laughs> that, like come on man like that that would save so much time but it's yeah. a great project gimp's been around forever if you haven't played with it you probably have if you need it and um yeah they, they just keep releasing cool stuff so good yes. on everybody involved now Yay. prepare yourself for a little bit of audio if you've ever played with a digital audio workstation, uh, Audora is usually the first one on Linux people play with, unless you're doing tracking like LMMS or something like that. But, you know, if you're doing the musics, um, now even if you're playing around with MIDI, because there's pretty reasonable MIDI support built into Audora these days, we got a new version. 8.4 is out. A couple of things to play around with this. Uh, you're like, hey, man, wait a minute. What about Audora 8.3? You skipped one. They didn't. It was a little security bug fix, so it wasn't released. What they're doing here is uh, kind of interesting because if you don't know, um, Adore is using GTK2, and you might be like, wait a minute, isn't that being depreciated in every, yes it is, every <laughs> single thing. It's gone away. At, so they're going to be moving the GTK2 to source back into the Adore tree or into the Adore tree. And, you know, that's going to let them modify, subtract all the needed bits, that, you know, just for Adore. I'm like, okay. This, this could be cool to sit back and watch. It's probably very interesting for the project itself. Couple of updates for this version, though. That's not the only thing. A couple of updates for control surfaces, a few visual tweaks. AAF showing up in Adore is kind of interesting, Joe. Yeah, you, it really uh, is. It's, it's called, um, it stands for the Advanced Authoring Format. And it, Import is now available in Ardor 8.4. I have personally... I uh, use the AAF -A -A format heavily in Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, and Avid for transferring audio and video settings from one program to another. Honestly, this uh, is a really important feature uh, for those of us who go back and forth from the different programs because what it does is when you do your edits in your audio track or video track, it'll keep those edits when you import that file format and yeah one of the interesting things cool. about it um yeah AAF, um i have to deal with it i've had to deal with it professionally a couple of times myself yeah. is uh something that should be avoided like the plague because <laughs> um it, it, it is a uh, not a fun thing to fight against especially i mean it's a better love story than omf which was the predecessor yeah, to that the predecessor AAF, yeah. uh, will at least uh, what joe was describing it's uh, what's called automation especially with lanes for your um, pan sweeps and um very heavily used for mm -hmm. moving projects between you know on the audio and post which that's where i've encountered it several times and i never thought i would see that in our door because it would go all the way back to july 2015 one paul davis you might know him as the creator of our door in italics i am never going to work on aaf it is impossible <laughs> to work on omf Rawr. <laughs> oh boy i agree with paul i agree <laughs> with paul uh i don't think paul was uh, i think it was a contributor it might have been um somebody you know adrian or somebody else added this in which is i mean it's great to see it's great to see i uh, Love that it's there. Uh, if you do ever get stuck playing around or being forced to deal with AAF on Linux, uh, AA Translator runs under Wine. You'll learn about it. 
you play with it and let you convert it into something reasonable so you can <laughs> work with the project and at least get a hold to what you need, you know, your part of the job, and then get it packed back in so you can ship out the deliverables. Or you can use uh, DaVinci Resolve if you have a pro version of that laying around. You can effectively do the same thing, pull it in, get the bits that you need to work on, pack it back up, and ship it back off. All right. Cool. Now, let's switch gears and talk about old, ancient equipment. Yeah. <laughs> decrepit technology from 2007. It's half control surface, half audio interface. Yes, I'm talking about the Tascam. Fire One. Pretty interesting bit of kit. Why? Because this came out 13 years before the IO Station 24C came out. And I did a video on that uh, last year. Yeah, like towards the end of last year. And it, it was effectively the same thing. Half control. There it is right there. The pre-sodas. Half control surface, half audio interface. And, you know, this was a portable FireWire audio interface with the, yeah, the shortcut keys, transport control, big chonky jog wheel on it. And of course, a couple of preamps, FireWire connecting, dual headphone, like just a bunch of cool stuff. I admittedly, I've talked about this before. I bought this because I was just scrolling through eBay and I'm like, what the absolute delete expletive is that? Huh? Mm -hmm. And Me. I bought it. <laughs> They're not common. There's like two or three on eBay right now, which says something. Um, yeah, you get those two preamps. You get MIDI. It's got hardware MIDI on the back. You get a high Z for your guitar jack. Took it for a spin on Debian 12. With pipe wire, on top of everything else, we got to check out all the things the kids are playing with, all the new tech, Pulse mm -hmm. Audio pipe wire. Really no problems. Everything showed up in QP graph and, you know, works with Jack. All the stuff's here. Plus, what I really wanted to know was, does the control surface section work under Linux? Because it's like, uh, maybe. Because if you know about control surfaces, they have a couple different modes. I had my pinky toes crossed that this was using Mackie mode. And it turns out, it did, and I was very happy to see that. Basically, you plug it. You don't have to plug it in. You plug the FireWire cable in. You plug it into your you know, FireWire PCI expansion card. You set it on Mackie mode, set the ports, and it just starts working. But it's a great little piece of kit. I don't know if I'd necessarily tell you to go run out and buy it. Uh, I did a write-up on Interfacing Linux if you want some more information. You can find them for you know about 60 bucks. I think my ultimate conclusion here was if you got one laying around or if you just run across one and you're looking for an audio interface slash control surface on the cheap because that jog dial, if you've ever had to do any type of serious editing, that jog dial alone, it feels really nice too. It's weighted. It's just like a block of metal or concrete or whatever's inside that thing. And uh, it's got a spinny LED green ring on it too. I mean, now how much would you pay? Ah, um, <laughs> that's cool. Having that impressed. with transport control <laughs> and yeah. the function keys is, if you, like I said, if you just find one, at least you know it works with Linux. What was that, Jill? Oh, well, I, when, the first thing I, I thought when I saw your video was it looks like my old video editing jog wheel I used to have, a big chunky. It was actually metal, and it was the original one I used to use on the Avid workstations. And mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that thing, that it, it had a very similar shape <laughs> to this device. Yeah, jog dials are like <laughs> omnipresent in production. Yeah. I, mean, I have a couple of them. So uh, using that in your workflow changes everything. That is, uh, yeah, it's so wonderful. Motorized faders. Uh, I've tried to demonstrate. Like, if you need it, you need it, and it, it changes your life. It can change oh. your workflow, yeah. Depending on, and you know, but like, if you're just doing the stuff, like playing around with it, that's fine. Use your mouse and keyboard. Ain't nobody stopping. Nobody making fun of it. <laughs> All Yay. right. Before we get out of here, oh boy, we got to rush. Uh, <laughs> Reggaeton, reggae <laughs> reggaeton music. <laughs> Be gone. Yes. So, have you ever had that pesky neighbor blast music at full volume early in the morning? I know. I, th I think most of us have dealt with that. Well, here is how one person ingeniously did something about it with a Raspberry Pi three, and because the neighbor was using a Bluetooth speaker to blast reggaeton music the developer built an ai device to disrupt it and they state in the article reggaeton be gone the name is a homage to tv be gone device will monitor room audio it will identify reggaeton genre with machine learning and trigger com requests and packets 
to the Bluetooth speaker with the high goal of disabling it or at least disturbing the sound so much that the neighbor won't have any other option but to turn it off. <laughs> so I just thought this was an amazing project. And there's there's lots of parts uh, listed. We've got, of course, the Raspberry Pi 3. There's a push button, micro SD card, a DF robot OLED 128 by 32 resolution, 5 volt 3A power supply, 3D printed case, USB mic or board mic. And there's some other other tools that are needed as well. And you can check out the show notes for the link with all the instructions and the tools needed. But this is just such a cool project. This is the nice way of getting rid of someone's loud music. This, this, is, uh, this is passive <laughs> aggressiveness taken to the... Um, <laughs> final conclusion now we've all dealt with that though like we, we yeah dealt, like somebody's playing music too loud um mm -hmm. this is a more classy way like me yes. my problem. I, i'll come find you man I'm like, <laughs> yeah knock 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 like, <laughs> yo and like i i can throw down like listen i i work at night man i can mess you up <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i'm awake i'm intentionally quiet for people um but in the past when i was like living in an apartment complex this was this is right up in the same vein of like uh you remember the guy who like mm -hmm. sent all the uh printed pages to the um printer on the network for the uh there were some people upstairs that wouldn't be quiet so he just like printed out he's like be quiet oh yeah yeah a yeah billion <laughs> times. And i was like all right i like this uh the i used to engage <laughs> in sonic warfare because uh <laughs> yeah like i got two four twelve cabinets guitar thousand watt soft deck i don't yeah yeah it's pretty easy those are on <laughs> wheels to so just roll that up to the wall and go how about some sound garden <clears throat> and, and uh but this is a more classier way of going about that i always like to see stuff like that and yeah uh, yeah pretty mm -hmm. cool maybe not something that i i struggle to just just walking over the neighbor and being like yeah hey, do do it nice first <laughs> right. be, be polite about it be polite yeah. about it and uh or, Usually you know, they'll understand. They just weren't thinking, or you know, they're excited about the music. Sometimes, sometimes people require reinforced learning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, th th this is a this is a humane solution to yes. the problem. And uh, <laughs> worst case scenario, you'll have to uh, pull another Mac address for the new Bluetooth speaker every now and then because they're never going to put that together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. If you like yeah. this. You, you want to come hang out and uh, party in our Discord and all the other stuff that we do, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. If you want to join us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash LinuxGameCast. We got LibrePay, PayPal, Crypto. We got wish lists. Jordan's got one. Jill's got one. Uh, Pedro's got one. I got one for the studio, which yeah. mm -hmm. if you watch uh, last Saturday's show, the reason I don't put <laughs> little joke things on the studio <laughs> <laughs> like Jordan's real big about that. Pedro's kind of big about that. You know, Jordan's got a collection of like creepy animal masks in his back. Yeah. And I saw the uh, Sonic the Hed Hedgehog onesie, and I'm like, oh, that Selena was cheap too. I'm like, all right, fine. Put it on the bottom of the bam. bam. Yeah. Aromatic dev, it showed up. So we unpacked <laughs> that, and it's got gloves. I'll, I'll wear it next Saturday. Yeah. I thank will. you, Aromatic um, dev. We got a furry Ven now. We got the. Uh, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. It's not even yeah. Sonic, dude. It's like legally distinguishable. Yeah, so it's, like it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got one for the studio. If you want to end up on this wall back here, uh, that's how we will publicly shame you as a way of saying thank you. You'll be next to uh, Linus and Frank, and of course, Jill has one as well. Uh, yeah. It's over LinuxGameCast.com forward slash support. If you can kick some coin on Patreon, or uh, if you're a Twitch sub, link that up. Pop in our Discord. That's where we're at the other six days of the week. That's where this conversation just shifts over and uh we got live audio rooms you know we do the track media if you want to get into that live and uncut versions of this show also you might have noticed even earlier this week i even but i don't think it, they were fighting ads youtube got really buffery a couple of days ago mm. like i even checked with my premium and it was still buffery but if you don't want to deal with like ad blockers and you want the highest quality version of this show and you like yeah. the video version <laughs> I got that for you on Patreon. You can just download it. There's no, you can stream it if you want, but if you want to like archive it for whatever reason, just click the download button and get it. You know, you're done. Nice. 
just as a thank you. Same with the uh, podcast. You know, that helps us because we host all those ourselves. Yeah. It's kind of brilliant. <laughs> all right. Beautiful people. Get out there. Make something else with some Linux. Report back. And if you survive, we will see you again yeah. next <laughs> week. All right. Let's roll some credits. Yay! We've got lots of wonderful patrons to thank, like Omega, Sonar Theron. And our executive producers are Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Hakeem, Chicago Kicks People, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasmia. <laughs> our Sea Monsters, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DSNG, Joe, Dirty Dan. Our Death Notes, Dirty Dean, Back, Dodger, <laughs> Churlings. Okay, Mir, Minus Nine. <laughs> I have to squint. If I want to try and read uh, our, our, all our beautiful chair links. <laughs> all right, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all.